Hey guys, so now you know how to make the best keema masala. I did that video not so long ago and I'll put it somewhere around here. But if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll go over it really quickly in this video so that you're ready to make your own keema paranta and it's gonna be amazing. So start by heating up some ghee and we'll also toast in all of our whole spices, bay leaf, cloves, cumin seeds. Next, we will add in all of our onions, add some salt and get that soft. And as soon as that happens, add in all of your mints. Now along with the mints, add in all of your dried spices as well. Everything except the garam masala. That will be at the end. So add in your veggie mirch, turmeric and ground coriander. Add some salt as well, enough for the amount of mints that you're having. If you're not sure, just add a little bit less. Next, give it all a good mix. Get those spices all up in that mince and then add in chopped ginger, garlic and green chilies. Adding them at this stage is going to make the mince really nice and fragrant. Now we want to keep cooking this until the mince is no longer pink. As soon as that happens, you want to create a well and add some richness to this keema or this mince by adding in some tomato paste. You want to cook that briefly right in the center of that pan until that tartness that's in tomatoes that's cooked off and then mix it all in with your mince. Once everything is well cooked, we're gonna finish this with some freshly chopped cilantro and garam masala. But if you want to see a more detailed video for the keema or the minced masala that I made for this stuffing, then be sure to hit the link down below to look at that video. Once it's all done and you're satisfied, you've tasted it, you've adjusted to your seasoning, set this aside in a bowl or a large plate. We want to cool this down to room temperature before we stuff it into our bread. So here I have some atta flour for our bread. So let's make our dough. To that, I'm gonna add in some carom seeds or ajwine, which is really fragrant and it's gonna really add a bunch of flavor into our bread. Now, this is completely optional, but for additional flavor, you can add in some salt as well. Now, I can't tell you how much water to put because it really depends on the type of flour it is and what you are feeling as you are kneading it. But you wanna get it all together, add a little bit at a time until you've kneaded it long enough that the texture is smooth and as you can see here the dough is soft but not sticky so if you're not able to find atta flour i would recommend you use white flour instead you would think that the next best alternative is whole wheat flour but the flavor is in my opinion completely different and i don't think Whole wheat tastes better than atta. Personally, if I couldn't find atta, I would make a white paranta instead. Once that's done, you want to let that dough rest under a moist paper cloth or kitchen towel. Let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes minimum, and then divide it into five to six portions. It should be pretty big, and we'll roll it out into a thick disc. Then add in two to three tablespoons of your mince and we'll start kind of twirling and folding the dough onto itself almost like you're making momos or dumplings and once you get to that end point to that end fold we'll twist it all up to seal it and then you can pat it all down and then turn it on the other side, squeeze out any excess air and then cover it and dust it with your flour. And then with a light hand, start rolling this out. Those little holes you see, I don't really mind that. I think when that meat gets toasted, it's just amazing. Plus it's mince. So a bit of it is meant to come out just because it's not something soft like potatoes or spinach that you're needing, right? This is like actual meat. So a bit of holes, 
I'm not too mad. Now here I have a tower pan, it's smoking hot and add your bread right onto that. Just slap it on there. And after a few minutes, you start seeing some bubbles on the top. When you see that, flip it, brush it or spoon it with lots of warm ghee. Cover it completely and you can see the texture changing. All that dry flour is becoming colorful and beautiful. Flip it and as that underside cooks and toasts from the ghee we just brushed, do the same thing to the other side. And then flip it again and we want to toast this until it's super nice and fragrant, golden brown, just like this. And you'll see it filling up with air. That's gonna make the parantas really nice and soft and that hot temperature, that hot smoking pan you see right there, that's what adds flavor, that smokiness onto your paranta. Repeat the same for the rest. You really need that pan, that tawa to be smoking, to really infuse the paranta with smoke. And that ghee really helps with creating that smoke, which ends up flavoring the paranta and gives it that classic flavor. And that is how you make a great paranta. A hot smoking pan, a well flavored seasoned stuffing and yogurt. Or in this case, sour cream, which I tell you is amazing with Indian food. I never had sour cream in India, but when I did try it, I'm like, wow, something special. Serve it with sour cream, ketchup if you want, your favorite pickle, and you will be a happy camper. I hope you guys liked this video, and if you learned something, let me know down below. Let me know if you're gonna make this with atta flour or any other flour, and let me know how it turned out. I'm really curious to see how this paratha turns out with different types of flour. Again, it's your recipe, so make it your own, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.